Are you ready to perform at your highest potential? Welcome to the Performance Matters podcast from GP Strategies, your talent transformation partner. In each episode, we'll interview industry experts and explore best practices and innovative insights to help your organization improve performance. So, um, as you've as you've been with this with this world the longest, um, <laughs> and I joined it some some time um, fair, fair while ago. But um, do you want to sort of um, tell us what you know where his, where compliance has come from? What's its history? What's its story so far? Yeah, sort of brief history, potted history yeah, of compliance yeah. training, I guess. I think it, it's it's good to look at the history because I think it helps us to understand why compliance training has developed how it has um, and and why it's different. So um, there are some differences which I think we'll, we'll tease out during this conversation, and I think it will help us to understand why it's different. Um, in the early days, as I say, when compliance was first dreamt up by the regulators, um, compliance training was exclusively classroom based because it was before the time of, of digital learning in any way. Um, it was delivered by compliance personnel. So people were grabbed from compliance departments and, and, and told that they had to give uh, compliance training. And that was regardless of their ability or indeed their inclination to, to do so. Um, and with some notable exceptions, I think lawyers and compliance personnel aren't necessarily the best um, the best teachers or speakers. So um, the, the sessions tended to be really, really content heavy, probably as a factor of that. Very long, very boring, um, death by PowerPoint or even death by acetate, as we're going back a long, a long time now, <laughs> was was probably how it was how it was described and the reputation that it got. Um, the ability to record and, and demonstrate attendance was really important right from the start. So there was lots and lots of admin involved. So sign-in sheets, booking rooms, sending invitations, often repeated invitations. So there was a very large admin uh, load for for the compliance team as well. Um, very quickly, I would say that the in-house compliance personnel won the argument that they didn't have the time, they didn't have the skills, they didn't want to deliver compliance training. And so a whole new profession was born the, of the compliance trainer. Um, and, and they took on the job of doing that compliance classroom training for them. Um, I was one of those uh, in at the start. Um, the training was still obviously classroom based, but uh, at least it was delivered, I hope, by people who were enthusiastic about the delivery as well as the content. But it was expensive. The admin was still there and all of the logistical challenges uh, remained. Um, so a few years into that, that's when CBT, computer based training, was starting out in its inf infancy. Uh, and the compliance industry grabbed it, grabbed it with both hands with enthusiasm. Uh, I remember those early days really well. It was really exciting to use these new tools and classroom trainers like me raced to convert their PowerPoint decks and slides into CBT uh, courses. Yeah. Uh, it was much cheaper. Um, yeah. Learners could take courses when it suited them. You could um, train, you know, thousands of people uh, at once rather than having to book sessions with, you know, 20 people in the room each time. Uh, completion was automatically recorded and reported yeah. and you could include assessment, uh, assessments. So it felt like we had the, you know, the sort of holy grail at that at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah. It certainly was the sort of the, the, the kind of what they back in those days called the killer app. Of yep. the digital learning. I mean, I I do remember a kind of weird hybrid where we did live training and then did a multiple choice question online. Yep. Um, but that probably moved very quickly forward when somebody realized, well, actually, we can create some training online as well. Yep. Yep. Um, I, I think there was another thing that meant it worked, which was the consistency of experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that. Trainers were great at doing it live and in a room, but some trainers might have been better than others. 
um, if you created one course and put it out from the center of your organization to everybody, you yep. knew they were all getting the same thing. Yep. They were all getting the thing that had been signed off by the, yep. the legal team. And you could spend a lot of time getting that right down to the final sort of full stops and wording and yep. know that everybody was experiencing precisely that, yep. that learning. Yeah. The Performance Matters podcast is brought to you by GP Strategies. Together, we can create a world where business excellence makes possibilities achievable. You can subscribe to the show anywhere you get podcasts or listen on our website at gpstrategies.com.